Paul, I'd like to not ask, you know, where are you currently finding opportunities? You know, you've got a very specific investment strategy. And could you give us an example or two of, of current stocks that you will find in opportunities? Yes, um, I think we're doing something slightly different from uh, Richard and Masaki in the sense that we're activist investors. We're not always looking for the best company. Uh, we're certainly not looking for bad ones. But what we're looking for are companies that have certain characteristics, um, particularly a, a reasonable business um, that is largely domestically focused. Um, too much cash or cross shareholdings or property on the balance sheet that allows the every man or salary man rather managements of these companies to sleep well at night. Um, companies that aren't terribly well followed uh, by search analysts generally and certainly not by international research analysts. So there isn't any English language research on most of our companies that allows us to do the fundamental uh, digging. Uh, and companies with a reasonably open share register. Uh, we don't want companies that can hide behind uh, all their traditional cross shareholdings and their pals, or indeed uh, the companies that they sell up to if they're part of somebody else's supply chain. We want companies that we can influence and we can talk to. Um, so, so given all of that, our sort of criteria uh, is slightly different. We're, we're not looking for a, a company that is necessarily fundamentally the best in its space. Uh, even the second, third, fourth, and fifth companies that do the same thing are of interest to us. Uh, and in fact, many of those are more, more easily influenced than the, the first one. Uh, companies that we're, we're company, uh, currently engaged with, well, we're having a, a public spat with um, uh, Fuji Media Holdings, which is uh, Japan's second largest broadcaster. Um, all broadcasting companies in Japan are very cheap. Uh, traditionally, uh, foreign investors don't get terribly involved with them because they have a um, rule they're protected by the Broadcasting, Broadcasting Act uh, and only 20% of their shares are available to international investors. Um, and as such, normally activists would be the last person or last type of investor who would, who would get involved. This company, though, um, its ROE is struggling to reach 5% uh, and the uh, um, the, the Tokyo Stock Exchange is saying that they, you know, all companies should target at least eight uh, percent. It's trading at 0.4 of one times book, um, so it, it is ludicrously cheap. We don't necessarily think they will do all the things we're asking them to do. Um, in principle, we're suggesting that they carry out an MBO, um, but we do think that our voice, married to uh, the regulators asking for better capital allocation and all the um, pressures that come to them from the uh, corporate governance uh, reform program uh, will eventually cause them to do something. And that's all we really need. We want companies uh, to do something to help themselves or to um, be taken private by uh, PE or, or in, indeed by their own managements. Uh, and that allows us to um, exit at a uh, good turn. So that, that's an example of one company we're engaged with. There are uh, obviously in a portfolio of 32. We can't engage with all of them all the time, um, but we are pretty active at the moment with 10 to 11 companies, not all of which are as recalcitrant as Food and Media Holdings has proved to be. Well, that it does sound interesting, that active approach, getting those companies to do something. Um, very interesting. Richard? Uh, where are you finding these opportunities at the moment? Um, thank you. Yeah, we see financial sectors as key beneficiaries of the normalisation of monetary policy that, that we're currently experiencing in Japan. And you know, sectors such as bank and insurance have really operated and learned to operate in a uh, zero and negative interest rate environment. And they're really reaping the re higher returns as interest rates start to rise. And we think... Um, you know, these sectors actually been right at the forefront of the improvement in corporate governance. And, and as a result of that, we're seeing very, very significant improvements in capital efficiency and direct returns to us uh, as shareholders through dividends and share buybacks. Um, equally, I think um, mid and small cap stocks, which have underperformed the rising market, are actually presenting many more uh, attractive opportunities. Uh, we tend to focus on well-established companies with very, very strong financial characteristics, management capability and 
probably important, importantly for for us, sort of very strong competitive positioning. So, you know, companies like Nippon Pillar Packaging, which are world leading um, supplier to the semiconductor production equipment industry, uh, companies like Manny, which are uh, 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 certainly regionally very well established um, medical product supplier. Um, it's these type of companies that we, we are very excited to be identifying at this stage. Definitely. Those small and mid-caps, very exciting. And Masaki, where are you finding opportunities at the moment? Yeah. So basically, our positive view on the Japanese equity market is dependent on the inflation and the corporate governance improvement. And the, from viewpoint of the inflation, uh, we like the company in the domestic service sector uh, that which has a strong pricing power because uh, that's a company uh, that can realize the most benefit from the uh, domestic inflation uh, led by the wage growth. So one company uh, we like is uh, named Kyoritz Maintenance. Uh, it's a business hotel operator under the brand name of the Domi Inn. And uh, they have a pretty strong franchise in uh, franchise value in that under the Domini Hotel. And, uh, and they have a strong pricing power. In fact, they already increased their room rate by more than 20% in the last year. And the current room rate is way above the 2019 because of the corona outbreak. So that suggests that they have a pretty strong pricing power in their uh, business area. Uh, which uh, should benefit uh, their co- their earnings growth under the inflationary environment. And uh, in the case of the corporate governance improvement, uh, we like the company called Toyota Industries, uh, which is the original origin company of the Toyota Motor Group. So one of the trends we are seeing under the corporate governance improvement is the, uh, this solution of the cross shareholding. And uh, even the Toyota Motor Group is starting to dissolve the cross shareholding. And the other origin of the Toyota Motor, Toyota Motor Group company, Toyota, in, Toyota Industry owns a significant amount of the stock of the Toyota Motor Group, like a Toyota Motor, Denso, Aishin, and that uh, holding value is now worth more than their market cap. So once they dissolve or release the value of their uh, shareholding, we're going to see a significant devaluation opportunity in the Toyota industry. So that's another stock we like at this moment. 